Yes, less Irish, more handsome, not Des Duffy. It's the Dan Williams Show, sponsored by APAT. Welcome, Lee. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm very well indeed, Dan. How are you doing? This is this is slightly weird, um, but <laughs> but also it's good very at the same time. I mean, when you rang me and said, you know, that Des wanted to sell his percentage of APAT to me, I, I couldn't say no. Um, my first port of call being the leader of APAT was to get rid of him. Um, which I think is a fair thing to do. I think we'll all be happy. Uh, but all joking aside, Des is crying his way back from Liverpool this <laughs> afternoon, this evening, um, in a myriad of tears. So I'm here instead with Lee. And I think we've got a special guest this evening, Lee. I mean, not very special, but a guest nonetheless. Well, we do. Uh, a regular on the show, Dan, is the best way to, to describe him. Um, so we thought, well, <laughs> yeah, who can we put alongside you to, you know, to to give you comfort and joy in your uh, in your first kind of hosting event? So, uh, so we thought we'd get Stu Ward in and uh, and, and see how that went. So, uh, evening, Stu. Evening, everyone. Uh, I do think that Dan's evening. lack of respect for his first ever England captain is remarkable. By the way, I mean, we, uh, to be honest, how many years ago is I forgot? I forgot you. Hey, were wait, hey, about fifty. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> I, to, be, to be fair, I have to say this is bad. I, I genuinely forgot I played. Did did I play okay? That's all that matters. I don't think any of us did. To be honest with you, <laughs> it's absolute carnage. <laughs> Excellent. That's why. Did we win a medal? Uh, no, no. I think we did. Did we? We can, well, I think we have a bronze, actually. I think uh, you won't remember. You were very drunk, but um, yeah, That's we did. Very true. Very Where true. did you guys play? Was it Stoke? No, it was this was no, it wasn't Stoke. DTD for the European. We beat the oh. England A team because yeah. we, we we were the we were the England rubbish team, and we beat the England A team. Pilgrim, Joe, yeah, that, 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 like the, the, the thirty second time you put Pilgrim as captain of the England team. And oh right, okay, fair enough. Yeah. We we showed him up though. It's fine. Yeah, it was all it was all good. I, I I did I did lose I did lose a sitting good to Kevin O'Hanlon. So you know I mean what we talk about it he bashed me up good and proper. I hope he's well. I haven't seen him for many years. I hope he's very well. But he, was, he hurt me that not, day. Not not the first not the last for that to happen yeah. to Stu. Yeah. Getting out getting O'Hanlon. I think we 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 like to call it. Yeah, very much. It, 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 it has a name, does it? It has a name. God, this was many years ago. But talking of like these events, who's excited for the world? So that's obviously we've got the World Series, but that's like pains and significance Secondary. to the WCAOP. That's yeah, soon, right? Lee, I mean, well, I should we're, know when this counting is. counting down the weeks now, Dan, aren't we, really? It's, uh, we're heading uh, heading very much in that uh, that direction. So looking forward to it. So we have got some people in the chat. I see Simon Lawler's in the chat. I know he was watching your cash game earlier on. Uh, and I saw you in the chat earlier on on Twitch, Stu, watching yep. um, watching Dan's cash game. Did you pick up any tips? Um, just... Don't lose every hand would be the main one, I think. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, there was I a lot of say, swearing going on, wasn't it? <laughs> so Simon left. He was convinced his his presence was that run bad. You'll be interested to know the ones that were there. I finished the session eight big blinds down. So considering we were, you know, a, a fair chunk down, we, we did all right in the end. We'll call it, that it, we it back. I mean, it was it was a win. It was a win. But yeah, thanks for the plug. I got six whole people there at once. I nearly shat myself. I did not know what to do. Um, you know, I've streamed before, and when you when you get more than like one person in the chat talking, it's quite quite intimidating. Yeah, I mean, the likelihood that they knew better than I was was quite large. So get them out of there. Just let me well, I mean, be by myself. I mean, to be fair, I was one of them, so that, that's not likely. I mean. I mean, yeah, yeah. The IQ was brought down. It's fine. It's yeah. Fine. Anyway, we have got some poker this evening. Like we're we're pretty close to some final tables. Um, yeah. Shall I've I been scrolling where, around. Shall I run through where we're where we're at, Dan, to give you an update? Because we are you are spot on. We are um down to ten in the uh, in the no limit hold'em um 
uh, final for tonight. So that's paying top 13, so they're in the money there now, but uh, we'll bring the final table up as soon as we uh, we get there with it. But there was the Sunday deep stack that started at 5 o'clock tonight. Uh, this is week uh, 61 of leaderboard ladders. Uh, like, I, yeah, not quite sure uh, where we've gone. But um, it was a Brazilian win uh, in the deep stack uh, tonight. Diego uh, Tamashiro uh, beat uh, Pontus Dagrim from Sweden, heads up with Jan Schack from uh, the... Mexico in uh, in third. Uh, top eight got paid in that, so well done to all of you guys that did that. As you mentioned, Dan, yeah, 73 runners in the No Limit Hold'em main event tonight, down to 10 at the moment. Uh, 676 bucks up top tonight for that one, so uh, that's nice indeed. Uh, Eddie Nyax, who's in that, uh, in that final 10, as is Mr. Wigglesworth. Jamie Lackenby's there as well. Mark Bennett is there. Um, uh, Hegedis uh, Gergo from um, Hungary is also there as well. Another regular player with with APAT. PLO tonight, 31 runners in that. Just slightly missed the um, uh, the guarantee in that one. But they are down to eight and they're paying top six in that one. One young Richard Rudling Smith. I don't know whether you guys have oh, ever wow. heard of him. Um, but nah. He is currently chip leader. Um, um, Sounds English to me, I mean. Yeah, it might be his first PLO game. I'm not quite quite sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, second in chips is Maximilian Schneider at the moment from Germany. Again, another regular player with uh, with APAT. Uh, Alessio Conti is also in that final eight as well. And then that uh, started at nine o'clock. Uh, $500 guarantee, but we've got 58 runners in that, so there's $580 in the prize pool for the Turbo Knockout tonight. Always the last one of the week and, uh, and always does very well. Down to 25 at the moment, paying top nine, so we'll keep an eye on that. And I will uh, keep you abreast of all of the, uh, all of the updates on the, uh, on the scores as we go through the night, Dan. Excellent. I've just been watching some of the action. Riveting stuff. Do you know what? Po watching poker when you're not in it, riveting. Absolutely. <laughs> How people watch people on Twitch, I have no idea. Whoever tuned in to watch me is silly. But, um, I mean, it probably pains because we have had, you know, we have had the football today. I know we're going to have to talk about the football. Me and Lee have already spoken as Manchester United fans. We don't really want to speak about the football. Oh, no, no. Let, let's talk about the football. What a day. What a day. Like, my, my live score alerts on my phone were flying off the handle as I was trying to eat my dinner. But, um... I mean, Stevie G does another slip up. Surely that's the that's the title for the newspaper in the morning. Do we and, not and think? What what a massive shame it was as well. I mean, I'm distraught for all the Liverpool fans out there, as you can imagine. I mean, well, I mean, my my take on it, it was, um, you know, it was an afternoon of it ebbed and flowed. There was ups and downs. It was will they, won't they? Who's going to get it? Who's not going to get it? And then by the time we got to quarter to six, Man United were in the Europa League. That's the way I saw it yes. uh, play out pretty much. Um, without even winning the game, our last game of the season, we got what we deserved from uh, from the season. Hey, Jake, do, do you not think that for Man United, it might, with Ten Hag coming in, it might have been better just to not qualify for any of the... Yeah, no, I... I, I no one, and just like literally let him concentrate in the league and rebuild the yeah. team. I have a feeling... We, honest, we, we, we tried, yeah, we if tried. We've got, if we've got Conference League, I think he might have played the under-23s in it or something and just treated yeah. it as, as that. Um, and gone gone with that on it. I know that might be a, people might argue that's disrespecting the, the the tournament and blah blah blah. But I, oh my god, it's the it's conference called league. the conference league. It's like <laughs> not, just, just, call, just call it the national league and just put the conference the old like Vanarama conference teams in there. It's like yeah, it's an yeah. absolute. Joke I'm of a I'm pretty sure I could make a phone call and be in this in in one of these teams in this competition anyway. There's like you know like Shamrock Rovers and like I don't know. Gloucester Guildhall 11. Oh, like, no, what, I love how the fact that Des, Des, Des isn't about, so we're putting the boot into the Irish teams. That's what I like. That's I reckon we could like call yeah. together an APAT, an APAT 11 to go and play against them and just like do better than half the teams in there. So, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know if you see, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen the field to APAT for a while, but the last time I checked, they all propped up the bar. I'm not sure many of them would be moving. We I mean, don't go wrong. I, I, I'm not volunteering. Do you remember when we used oh, to yeah. play five-a-side at an APAT event? They were in Newcastle. Yeah, whose idea when, was when, that? When Phil Tompkinson nearly killed John Murray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, did anybody film it? <laughs> no, unfortunately not. It was very funny, though. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Should give a shout-out to those that are in the chat. If you're in the chat watching, guys, do give us a give a give uh, give yourselves a mention and we can uh, we can see you and know you're there because uh, Facebook's always a bit funny at times. It's easy if you say if you post up a hello in the chat. So Simon Lawler's in there, as we mentioned um, earlier on. He says, evening people uh, confirms, yes, it was DTD you guys played at because, as we know, Simon is the font of all knowledge 
uh, yep. that there is out there. Uh, Eddie's in the chat as well, says uh, says good evening. And uh, just as we've gone to a final table, so uh, bear with me a second and I will bring that final table up and uh, we can get that. that. Uh, Igor Asimov is also in the um, in the chat as well. So evening to you too. Uh, and plenty of others uh, tuned in to watch this. So uh, we have a final table, guys, of this uh, No Limit Hold'em. Uh, Theodore Johnson is going to be chip leader going to this. Pascal uh, Iverson um, from Austria, second in chips. Eddie uh, is there, third in chips. Uh, Elena uh, Zborna. Zborna? Yeah, we'll go with Zborna um, from the UK. Mr. Wigglesworth is fifth in chips. Uh, Hegedus, as I mentioned earlier on from um, Hungary, is... is is sixth in chips. Mark Bennett, uh, Nicholas Wilfinger, and then Jamie Lackenby makes up the nine. Uh, what do you know about these players, guys? Anybody you want to give a shout out about? Uh, I know Mark Bennett. Mark Bennett's probably the, the I would say the best player on the on that I know of on the on the final table. He's a streamer, M Ben Tend. He's a Paddy Power sponsor pro. So you'll catch him on Twitch quite a lot. Uh, he's very, very good. He's got some very good results. Um Based in Wales, I believe. Uh, Pete Wigglesworth, well, we all know Pete. Um, Eddie's pretty good. I don't, I've never met the guy, but I have played against him in these games. He seems pretty sticky. Um, the rest are lost on me, but they're all they're all heroes, right? They've all made the final Absolutely. table. Well, yeah. Pete's, uh, Pete's it, Wigglesworth in the chat. He just literally posted leads, leads, leads. Um, so, can we ban? Uh, can we ban Pete from? Yeah, I mean, the chat and Paul, Dave, I mean, I might say. Poor Natalie, I, I I dropped her a message after the game tonight because she's just yeah pretty pretty unconsolable at the moment with about the um about what's gone on. Her beloved uh, Burnley have uh, have got relegated and uh, yeah, there's not really as I said to her, there's not really any words, is there? Really, uh, nothing you can say uh, when uh, when that's happened. You've you've been through that, Stu, with with Borough, haven't you? It's not a not a nice. Feeling. We 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 got relegated like a long time before the. Like, like the, our last game was away at Liverpool when we knew we were relegated, so that, we weren't really that fussed that game. It was just like a big old piss up in league in uh, Liverpool. I mean, I, I won't lie, you. Obviously, Burnley and Borough have got a little bit of history because Sean Dyche hated us because we beat him when he played with Chesterfield in the FA Cup in like 1996. So we've always had a little bit of heat there, and obviously Leeds are Leeds, and we don't like Leeds. So I, I, I would say I was over the moon no matter which way it went. But I do feel sorry for Natalie because, <laughs> you know, I mean, she's obviously a massive Burnley fan and it's, it, it, and she has probably taken it very hard because she won't be able to make her 3,000 TV appearances uh, yeah, next her, season. Her me media, um, uh, yeah, media yeah, uh, lineups might be a, a little bit limited for next season, quite possibly. But yeah, I think I'm happy that Leeds went down just because I thought that Burnley went down. But uh, I, I mean, if Leeds went down as well, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> yeah, could, could you have got both of them done? That's the question. Yeah. Oh, I think that would have been just like the, the absolute dream. I, I, think so. I don't actually watch that much Premier League football. I, I, I watch a few games here and then I keep track of it. But the Championship's where it's at. You know, I mean, that's where all the proper football's played and stuff, you know. How, do, how did you finish this year in the Championship? Uh, we came seventh. Where? So one, one place outside the playoffs. But that was with half a season of Neil Warnock trying to drive our club into the ground. I being Neil Warnock. I mean, so. I stopped watching Championship football because I had a season-long bet and all of the things came in and the last bit I needed was West Brom to be the highest place Midlands team in the Championship. And they were obviously like, you know, second halfway through the season. Yeah. And it was like 172 to 1. And I had a little bit on. And uh, obviously West Brom fucked it because they're useless. So... Um, yeah, don't not interested in championship anymore. So anybody in the championship, <laughs> just don't just just give up. Go and go and watch golf. More nah, interesting. the championship is great because it, it's 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 a horrible tight league, and you get like a million games a season. It's brilliant to watch. To be fair, I mean I actually quite enjoy it as a fan. It's like the Premier uh, League. Basically, if we're in the Premier League, we go up there and we get rolled by half the league. Every season we batting relegation, whereas now we've got Chris Wilder in charge, and we've actually got a bit of hope for next year, which is nice to have. Whereas if we're the Premier League, we'd just be getting brayed all over the place by people. Uh, Simon Lawler I'm, I'm says, really... says apparently uh, championships on ITV next season. Well, or the highly highlight show anyway. So. Yeah. That's good. I to be honest, I'm really excited. So I'm. It's really where I live has had nothing in football for years, and now Forest Green Rovers are obviously into into League One, and they're. 20 minutes down the road. Cheltenham Town are 20 minutes the other way and they're in League One. 
plus to see are rubbish, but I still go and watch them because they're 10 minutes down the road and it costs six pounds and I get like a hot dog for like a quid or something. Yeah. And I haven't had salmonella, not had salmonella yet, so I'm doing well. Oh, um, really winning. But we're we're really spoiled for like local decent level football now. So like I can go to Forest Green, have a vegan burger, controversial, oh. but I could go watch Derby. I can, you know. Can... <laughs> By the way, fantastic that they're in League One. <laughs> Yeah, but still, did, I, did, I, did, I get to pick... did, did, did we all hear that the narrative of the you know, that Steve Gibson, Boris Chan, was killing their club by suing them for being cheats? Will, um, will right? Rooney will uh, Rooney stay there if they uh, as they've if they're down again? Is he committed to what? You know, what surely he, he can't. It's just like I mean, there's rumours they might get another point deduction because the administration's taking so long, and I hope that's true because seeing them in League Two would be even more funny. Is, not not fun then, Stu. Are there not any other fan. clubs that you don't mind, Stu, or is it is it pretty much just? Uh... Well, I, 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 I don't know. It's just like, like basically, what happened was, I mean, we've always been like, we were always at like the top end of the championship, like competing together, and they were like just Derby fans and saying the best team in the world, so it's fine. But but when, when they went to the administration, because they cheated, by the way, you know, you know, they they just broke the rules and. All their fans were posting little memes of like Mel Morris having the EFL on strings and stuff, thinking it was hilarious. Then they go into the administration because they're cheating, and all of a sudden they start crying. They're boo-hooing all over the place, right? And and then it was Steve Gibson's fault because Steve Gibson decided because they cheated, he wanted to sue them because we lost out in the playoffs. Yeah. And and then they then decided that Steve Gibson was going to basically kill their club. And if if Steve Gibson wasn't suing them, that um, you know, it would all be fine and they'd sell the club. Steve Gibson settled that lawsuit about was it two months ago, three months ago? And they still haven't been sold. <laughs> but but you're okay about it though, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I no, I, say, honestly, you... I'm just enjoying watching their absolute misery, and honestly, watching like on Twitter all their fans crying about their club going out of business and you know begging people to help them. It's like no, no, you put yourselves in this situation by cheating. So oh, you just deal with the consequences. Oh, Simon Lawler's in Stu, chat again I... saying 15 points. So I'm guessing that's the potential oh, uh, the so. points deduction, maybe. Uh, he also mentions about the Forest Green Rovers boss um, being snapped up by Watford. Um, obviously, yeah, I know. A bit of a bit of which a is crazy. Yeah, and he'll be off again. As well. yeah. I'm gonna, Stu. I'm gonna sign you up to a book club, mate. You're getting far too excited over other men putting on shorts and running around a pitch. <laughs> I'm gonna sign you up for a book club. They might, hopefully, they don't give you any smut to read because you'll get too excited. But I think you need to. Am I, am I wrong in think remembering that you used to be very much into your running? Still is. Well, I, I am. No, so, so, so you are a man who runs behind other men in very short shots. <laughs> yeah. uh, to be fair, that's but a no, fair comment. Yeah. I, well, it's not a fair no, comment. I'm normally on. at the front. I'm normally oh, at the front. Yeah, so they're running yeah, after yeah. me. So, Un unlike your poker, yeah. <laughs> however, Stu. However, Stu. I sadly have a broken foot now, so don't you feel bad? Oh, oh no, no, I'm dreadfully dodgy. I'm just, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> so Wiggleworth is all in with the King Queen. Uh, Eddie's got the eights, and the eights are going to be good. And I think that's yeah, that's going to be Pete. Pete Busto in See you later, place. alligator. A hundred and seven dollars. Uh, but uh, uh, that leaves six of them. Uh, six seven six up top, guys. Uh, Four hundred and thirty six for second, and three hundred bucks for third. So um, lots to play for up so there, guys. It's only it's only like a month until W Cube starts, right? Is that right? Is it a monthly? Uh, just yeah, just over a month. Yeah, about five weeks. Um, and have you announced all of the international teams? Because I still haven't had a phone call. Um, have you still weird. had a phone call? Of I think I think I find that Paul Haycock is the captain for the seventy third year in a row. Yes. Um, well, you may, you may have you may you have know. just missed the cut this uh, this time round. Um, Shit, the best. Uh, I think what about the Greek at... team? Got any Greek? Yeah, yeah we're looking at. Yeah, um, Craig McKinnis is playing for him. <laughs> We're looking at, um, I think it's going to be between 12, 12 to 16 teams, I think, in the, um, in the team event uh, is, the, is the plan. Um, and uh, we're not going to be a million miles off being able to announce the online um, events as well, um, hopefully in the next week or so, uh, to go with that. And then we'll, uh, we'll start rolling out some satellites and get the holding tanks up so people can start uh, buying in and, uh, and making, making the changes. I mean, one thing I should mention on Party Poker... Um, came up with the latest update. I don't know whether you guys have noticed it, but from the 6th of June, they um, seem to be enforcing um, uh, more loss limits on the on the site in general across Entain, um, um, uh, requiring you to uh, to answer similar sorts of questions to those that you would 
be asked if you went into um, into a land based casino now. So around what you do for a living and um, and kind of affordability stuff. So that looks like that's starting to be rolled out online. I don't know whether you've come across that yet. Oh, that'd be good for you, Dan. What's that? <laughs> what loss limit? What? Why would it be? <laughs> Oh, I just, yeah, I just, I, I, it's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> I, I've got, I've got nothing to say to that, Stu. It's just, it's just, a, yeah. So I, I was in Dan's chat early on his stream earlier and you told me he was going to give you loads of abuse. So I'm just like, kind of getting in there first now. <laughs> Stu, the thing is with you is you just have to keep quiet, let you do it yourself. And then like, you just throw them That's up so I can true. hit them out of the park. I just, I'm just holding back. <laughs> oh, Mark's. Mark's just doubled up there with the ace nine versus the king deuce. Up to the big that, that height the, of nine Mark bigs. was in the big blind there and had been a raise. Was it a raise from Theodore Pre? Yeah, must have been. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, raise, I raise, Mark, raise the old Mark king too. He's just making the. He's just getting it in. Yeah, and uh, seeing where he's at. Especially if you know that your opponent's opening under the gun with king deuce suited. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, make a note, everybody that's got the client up. That's a good one to know. Uh, but yeah, you, you get any ace in there. I mean. You could argue that there's, there's a better selection of hands that don't have, contain an ace, just so you can free up some some equity. But an ace is a good how, how many how many bigs are the? Could you not shove pre there? Or I mean, the other guys raise under the gun, but it, yeah, Mark only had five. Very, yeah, so Mark, it's Mark only did it, yeah. five. Yeah, so did he did he flat pre with five bigs? No, 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 no. no, no he, Theodore he opens. Up. He just shoved. Theodore opens under the gun with King 2 suited. Uh, Mark jams the big blind with Ace. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Theodore calls. Yeah. It's yeah, very, that's... very straightforward. Yeah, oh, God, it's very straightforward. Well, Stu, I'm not sure the your... King 2 open under the gun was a straightforward open. You know, or... it takes all sorts. Um, who's your tag team partner, Stu, for the W Coop? Or WCAOP, whatever we call well, it now. Well, I haven't, I haven't got one yet, unfortunately. I've not found somebody drunk enough. That's a shame. I heard that. I heard that Lee's looking for a partner. Always looking for a partner. It would uh, not be fair. That, mean, that means that they don't have to play. They can just. Um, they can just get on and do it. So uh, that's the easiest way. It, to, it, it, it would, it would yeah, be fair what, the rest of the field if me and Lee teamed it together. So. What are what are your rules on that? This Lee, is it the same as the WSOP? Just you've got to play like X amount of. What, you've got to just play one hand, and then yeah, you can yeah, disappear and let the. Your... I think it, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the absolute bare bare minimum um, to keep say to keep it most flexible for anyone that's playing anything else or, or whatever they're doing. So. If if there would be one of us playing all the hands, it would definitely be Lee. <laughs> I'd sit down. Yeah. I'd, I'd basically probably rage fold the first hand and then tag Lee in and go and go in the bar. You, mate, you and really wouldn't want to because I don't think I'm trying to think the last time I actually played live poker. Um, it was quite a while ago, and I think the way I'm going, I was hoping I was going to get some poker in the start this year, and I'm not, which means basically the first time I'm going to play live poker probably for about three years is going to be in Vegas in July. <laughs> so, Solid. Hey, have you, could, have you got, you, have you got go your wrong? schedule sorted, Lee? For, for Vegas, have you got a schedule right? sorted for uh, Vegas? No, we're catching the last uh, last week of the series pretty much, so um, there's a couple of good ones there. There's a couple of nice sort of $700, $800 comps and stuff like that so I might play might play those um but yeah other than that to be honest i'm, I'm more looking forward to a break and just um just having a, yeah. a, a, a week or so out there and um if, if i, can I, I have break, never been to vegas um in the summer so this is my first time over there oh wow okay like that isn't in november basically excellent are you looking where at you see, where are you, you guys staying? Particularly series wise, Stu, or just um, just going to go out and see? Nah, um, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll play some of the like kind of like just like local comps, but I, I don't think I played any of the any of the series, unfortunately. But uh, we're, we're going to just like and like, have a mosey around. We'll probably go over there at some point just to kind of like take the atmosphere in and stuff because obviously we've I say we've never been over there, so. Well, of course, it's different now because it's not the Rio uh, anymore. Yeah. So um, it's uh, Bally's and... Um, it's just on the well, strip, yeah. Bally's, which is now Horseshoe and and Paris. So um, a completely different yeah. feel to it, I guess. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I'm, I have fond memories of Paris. I remember being on the dance floor at 2 a.m. in the morning, somewhat inebriated, dancing with God knows who. But... Um, 
that that you know that dance floor is probably taken up with poker tables with people earning hundreds of thousands of dollars so you know who's missing out me or them i'll let you be judge yeah absolutely them but um if you're gonna go Stu, look at the the nuggets got a really good schedule like 200 dollars buy-ins like really small but yeah. decent guarantees and good mixed games so their their festivals i played it when i went to the series the last time i went and like they've got stud they've got stud eight they've got eight game they've got Raz, like individual just Raz tournaments, massive variety, dirt cheap. Not not the greatest structures to be fair, not the greatest card room, but it is what it is though, isn't it? I mean like I say, we, when we've been over the, the past I've played I've played a lot of like Aria because I think that's a that's got a lovely card room. Quite like mm. the Aria. Um we've played we say we've played a few a few of the nugget and so I like, say yeah, I'll just see what happens. It just depends on how I feel on the day, basically, and how much. What you'll find Stu, if, you, thinking... if you've not been out there when the series is on, um, what you will find is obviously because the volume of players goes up. Um, quite often, uh, venues put on additional you know, yeah. tournament space. So the the wind, for example, you know, has a chunk of their the outside of their card room that they use for tournaments um and the aria does the same i mean i played a tournament at the aria a little while ago and you were pretty much sat in between the slots uh yeah. literally slot machines all round yeah. you because you weren't you weren't in the poker room because the poker room was rammed with cash games and yeah move tournaments to a separate area during the world have you found that's pretty standard dan when you ever you've kind of um uh, been there yeah so well yeah in the big rooms right so in the big rooms where the festivals take place so I remember playing cash in the Venetian when the when the deep stack series was on. When I was over there, and I literally was in the corner by the kitchen. You know, in the Venetian on the on the top floor where the card room is, you go around the side, and then you've got obviously all the restaurants that are just attached to the Venetian. We were literally almost in the galleyway of that, so you could just see yeah, food yeah. being like lumbered out, and it was uh, it was interesting. Um, I don't know. I just think to, you know, take in all the casinos and find what you can find. We managed to get a three three stud game running at the flamingo when i was there we were staying at the flamingo because we we're cheap um <laughs> we managed to get a three three stud game nobody at the table bar me knew how to play stud i had to teach the players and yet we were playing you... for good money it was fun did, it was did you lose no 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 i had a very i had a very profitable day i've only been once and it was it was it was very profitable so it was good yeah, we, we we got a what was it a, 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 i think it was a six six um pl like plo8 game going over there a uh, cash game when it was um like when apat was over there and honestly it was absolute carnage and in the end of that, there was there was me there was joe smith and um somebody else just sat there like 300 it was like there was like locals queuing up around the block to come and like take us on and unfortunately for them me and Joe well I at least had zero idea what was going on and just kept on betting and yeah it was fantastic well it was, it was brilliant just to, it's, it's, it's good to get involved in them games sometimes the oh is, there's loads of them I, I the trouble is with all, with, um, with the mixed games is is I mean Vegas now seems to be about the only place where you can play even online now other than other than yeah. poker stars where else can you play mixed games anymore because you know, the sites don't seem to be investing in in putting those on, so it's kind of stars online or pretty much um, Vegas is kind of it at the moment. Or Robbie's Robbie Robbie's got his little thing now, hasn't he? Yes, he's got his yeah, mixed game yes, tour, yeah. Robbie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done yeah. Two, uh, two of them so far, uh, but again, it's 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 Vegas based, isn't it? You're finding a venue there that'll uh, I'll do. It. But it's, isn't it really weird that online? So you think that um, GG came into the market and have been, you know, a huge, massive explosion of what they've they've done. Party have have really kind of ramped up their game in the last sort of three or four years. Um, Eighty eight have always sort of, you know, been been there or thereabouts, but none of them have decided to dip their toes into into putting more of the mixed games on or getting their software capable of running them. They leave stars just to do that. It's it's very strange. I said, yeah, I think the problem with mixed games is. Unlike Hold'em and, and Omaha, in which you know, you t and I, I, I don't know if any of you watch Pads's like Instagram shorts of him with the uh, <laughs> just playing his like massive screen of all these tables during scoop and whatever else. Um, playing Hold'em or PLO for these pros, eighteen tabling or whatever they're doing, 
is pretty straightforward. If you're going to play a schedule of mixed games, you're probably not playing more than six tables, I'd imagine, because especially if you're playing a, a tournament that is a mix in itself, you know, so like eight game or, or horse or, or whatever, in which the games rotate. Being able to keep up with all the tables that are happening when the game changes, um, you know, what the, and you've got to think in these rotations, how easy is it to tell if you're playing seven card stud or seven or, or you know, or high low? stud high low it's not very simple online so the demand for the tournaments themselves running concurrently isn't there so they might as well just leave stars to do it because a player can't play more than six eight game tournaments at once say or six variations of a mixed game at once because it's just it takes too much brain power and the edge is lost so i just don't think i just don't think the other sites want to invest the time and money to run 10 10 field tournaments it just they're not going to make the guarantee I just don't think it makes makes any sense for them. Whereas yeah, stars can perfectly logical yeah. continue to do it. I mean, I'd love it. I, I'm a mixed game. I prefer mixed games to hold them. And obviously, I, I can't play on stars, so I struggle now. I can't play anywhere really for mixed games. But um, yeah. So Simon it is what it is, I suppose. Uh, MGM uh, MGM Grand has a mixed game series too. Uh, schedule looked interesting. So. Uh... Um, there you I go. Thought, Simon knows MGM, everything. He, I thought MGM had shut. Maybe they shut their, their poker room and then have, have now re reopened. But I thought they'd shut it even before pre kind of pre pandemic that they'd uh, they'd done that. But uh, quite a few of the the Vegas card rooms actually uh, gradually shut down. Um, say even before COVID. So, yeah. Uh, be interested to see what's it. But I think it makes sense. Running. Makes sense to open during the World Series, right? Yeah. Um, but interestingly, going back to talking about all these car all these online poker operators, did you see that Ian Simpson's been announced today as the new eight 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 ambassador? Ah, okay, excellent. Ah, uh, good for him. I called it. Was with, um, I, was with I did Unibet. call it. Yeah, was with Unibet, wasn't he? So. Yeah, he, yeah. So he was with Unibet and streaming them for them for a while, and he left Unibet, and it seemed really odd. And I messaged him and said, "Are you going to be with eight eight eight?" And this was about two months ago, and he just ignored me. And I was like, "Oh, that's a bit." Funny. And then he messaged me, <laughs> messaged me like yesterday to be like, uh, "Have you seen the announcement?" And I was like, "Are you with eight eight eight?" He's like, "Yeah." I, was like, I knew it. Makes sense. Eight 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 are doing. I've got a really smart business model, I think, for for poker in general um, with what they're doing. I think their tour price point hits really well. It's not too expensive, and it's it's attracting the European kind of players. They're doing a lot of work in like the Canadian market and everything else. And then I think that what they do with their stream team is quite smart, where they've taken a lot of these like smaller, you know, ten to hundred viewer viewed channels, um, and given them an opportunity as opposed to these huge names. Um, Who's that? Is that a ghost? Mm -hmm. Was that some? I heard a woman's voice. Where was that from? Can't be at Stu's house. Is that you, that's, Lee? That's very. That, that's very weird. I didn't hear anything. So uh, Simon yeah, yeah. just confirms that MGM Grand, uh, yeah, reopened their card room and the festival is in a separate area. He believes. Um, so uh, ah. it might well be worth um, worth uh, checking uh, checking that one. Yeah. So uh, congrats to Ian Ian Simpson. Great to see him uh, say back uh, doing what he. Uh, he does best, uh, just with a, a different uh, different brand this time, but that's all good. So we're down to four players here, guys. That's This is kind of got down quite quick. Theodore Johnson, still chip leader, um, but there's not really a huge amount between Theodore, Pascal, and uh, and Elena. Um, it's uh, Eddie's the kind of the short stack at this table. Now we're blinds at 17,500 and 35,000, so Eddie's got what about... Um, uh, what if you click on the uh, 14, chip stacks, we can see... Yeah, you, you know that I'm a massive fan of just seeing it in big blinds. I've got it. I've got it here in big blinds. There you go. There you it go. makes sense. For you, Stu, for you. Thank you. There you go. You're you know, my simple I brain mean, can't can't work these things out. Ed, Eddie's in a really tight spot here, actually. Like his his seat position and the fact that the stack distribution between the other three is is as even as it comes. He kind of just needs to ramp up the aggression and yeah. and almost settle for fourth because he dents it's a flip reversal right he dents anybody's stack and doubles up they go into they go into a clear fourth place so it's interesting to see him taking this really kind of tippy tappy trappy line here where he should be really kind of yeah I'd, I'd, I'd just be slamming my chips in to 
every decent yeah, looking yeah. spot. Just like this. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's all about equity denial. And there you go. And now we look at it and 30 plays 20 plays 24 plays 28. So it's it's anybody's game. It's the ready money round. Um, but I think Eddie, I think when I came second a couple of weeks back, I think it was Eddie that beat me heads up. So he's obviously quite um, quite known for going deep in these events. So I've never, does he play the live events as well? Yeah, I, I don't know. Play, just, start, just started playing um, uh, APAT um, live uh, recently, was at, at the London event. Um, and uh, but has had his number of number of caches live as well. I think he had a really decent cache uh, at the Hippodrome when they reopened after lockdown. So um, uh, that's it. Well, he's clearly taking your uh, your advice from the from the two of you. Oh, I know he's in the chat, so he's uh, he's obviously uh, literally gone. Well, if that's what they say to do, I'm going to get in with my eight. He's come up against Ace Queen. No, I, I just flop a though. set as well. Just oh, flop a set. Uh, just flop a set. No, but I, I like that show. What, what are you going to do with eights there? It's either it's got to be jam or fold. I mean, you don't want to be opening and getting shoved on. So. Oh, I there's no, there's no question. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a jam. There's, there's no other option. Um, oh yeah, I could, it, we won the Poker Stars London series for twenty five k. Yeah, yeah. Um, Average. at the end of end of last year. Um, I mean, it's, that's, I mean, that's only a five figure um, score, isn't it? It's not. It's, it's not like a, a six figure off a cent, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just. So what do you do now? Oh, okay. So you've gone from the, you've gone very quickly from the short stack up to uh, to the chip leader, but it's it's still uh, you've now got uh, Elena in exactly the same position that Eddie was, you know, sort of about you know, uh, an orbit and a half ago. Um, it's still not. I think a, I, I keep I keep the pressure on the other, on the on the other two now. I mean, you don't want to play. You don't want to try and put pressure on Elena because they're like, you know, short stack. So basically, the other two, you, you try and put a bit of pressure on them, just to like. Because they shouldn't really want to be playing while she's like still sat there, but they're still sat there like ten bigs. She's okay. she's absolutely right. Eddie Eddie just now needs to pile all the pressure on on Theodore and and Pascal. You've got to think like they've all locked up two fifteen six seven six is up top. Um, so sort of equity wise, if they make a misstep or or get caught out, then ultimately they're losing you know a hundred yep. plus dollars of equity. So realistically now whoever has the chip lead in this spot should just speak over it i mean yeah, eddie should floor. probably probably attack theodore more than pascal um yeah. just because of the just because of his seat position and stack yeah, sizes uh, but limping limping into my big blind there it's just a green flag to just kind of go no thanks sir i'll take that yeah I'm, again you've got to you've got to make you need to know a little bit about theodore i suppose um but yeah his his sort of raising from the big blind range there should increase by at least sort of 20 percent yeah um but it's interesting as well because theodore's making it a little bit more difficult just by adding those 0.2 big blinds on his open um it sounds really trivial but opening the difference here opening like two bigs to 2.2 is is actually quite significant when you start to think about applying pressure in three bets and c bet sizing um because they're playing so shallow right average, average stacks what 20 21 bigs maybe something like that no not even that 19 18 bigs is, is average stack so oh here we go oh another set everybody's flopping a set it's easy when you flop a set so elena doubles up i think that's and good for it, you. It, it's good for you now though because he's got two stacks around the similar size and they both can't really twitch without like with either one of the same stack size so i think eddie should now be putting a lot of pressure on the blinds when it falls around to him yeah. in the eddie, eddie eddie can literally open a lot i don't <laughs> want to say it but like yeah like 93 percent of yeah, that oh, yeah. yeah. right and he can three bet like 25 30 percent of pounds versus theodore ultimately so it's really interesting it's nice to see right it's nice to see um so let's see how this plays out. So Theodore's open 2.2, as we know. Uh, Eddie's peeled on the button. Again, ace, three, four. All the black cards, one green. Oh, he just clicks it oh. back. 2.2 seems to be the kind of the, the in standard raise these days, doesn't it, online? Um, it's, 
No, no. It depends, well, it depends what site you go on. Go to GG and it's it's just two. Always two. Nobody really, puts the always extra Literally, min, I min race. Yeah. The, the point, I think, the whole the whole point of an opening size, it should change. Oh, here we go. What's going on here? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Hold it. Nice hand, oh. Theodore. Yeah. Um, it should be bigger. You should open more big blinds the deeper the effective stacks are, right? And so when you start a tournament and you can 3x it and then the antis come in and you go to 2.5 and it goes to 2.2, once you're once you're kind of this deep, two two and two point two do exactly the same. No, no, mathematically. Yeah, they get the same answer, of, don't they? Basically, I mean. Well, they, they do, and, and mathematically, um, that extra zero point two big blinds may not look like much, but when the average stacks only eighteen big blinds, and you open that and somebody peels it, it's half a big blind, right? So your C bet size ultimately becomes another. And all of a sudden, there's an extra big blind, big blind and a half in every pot that goes through a couple of streets, which doesn't sound like a lot. But a big look at these stack sizes now: a one and a half, two big blind swing between the bottom two stacks is massive, right? Um, so, so, King nine. Oh my god! Oh, run well. There we go. Eddie's knocked out another one. King nine versus Jax. How are you running? Leaving them dead to. Two outs on the on the river. That, that was what sort of um that was eight bigs to make the call with that with about sixteen um sixteen bigs in the middle or fifteen <coughs> in the middle um with the stack sizes the way they are it's kind of tough when you've got you know king suited there to not make the call isn't it really for what what was about uh, maybe twenty 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 five percent of your stack yeah and the thing is you've got you probably at worst most often than not you've got forty percent equity yet. If you lose the hand, you're still in, and actually you're probably still yeah. chip leader. Um, but if you knock that person out, you know that's a sixty-five dollar swing. Uh, sorry, a, an eighty-five dollar swing plus your your chip equity suddenly becomes ridiculous because first price is six seven six. So having forty percent equity and only losing twenty-five percent of your stack with the potential of basically locking up probably three hundred dollars worth of financial equity. You have to take it. Yeah. yeah. And in the long this term. is now the this is and now it, the ideal situation for Eddie, chip leader, two with the similar stack sizes that are that are, are shortish, uh, means you just now can apply a lot of pressure, yeah. Yeah, of course, absolutely. And especially when like from what I've seen and from what I know of these other players, they're very um passive. Um so Eddie's in a great spot. Like here he can just he's just put Theodore in and that that, that call like, that, that call in the turf from Theodore is just like so confused. Oh. Okay. Well, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> but again, look, he has kings, and and Eddie can put pressure on those. And you know, I mean, it's not an easy call to make with an ace on the turn. Um, yeah, 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 I agree and, completely. And, and it's not even the ace that's too scary. It's the two sevens that you know Eddie has all of the seven x suited, seven nine suited, seven eight suited six seven six, all of these in his sort of opening range so you know very brave call and a very very smart call in in a in a vacuum but this is what eddie had to do it'd be interesting to see if theodore ramps up the aggression like eddie has or if he just sits back on this ship lead and locks up an extra 136 dollars um just for those of you out there um, out there watching, uh, don't don't adjust your sets. You have tuned into the APAC show, and we are actually talking about some poker. Yeah, I was going to um, say, don't, by don't, the way, don't what, panic, what anybody. Yeah, don't don't about. worry. Yeah, this is what happens when Des takes a night off. We actually start talking about some poker. Yeah, we're not watching random videos. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> well, we couldn't talk about Liverpool, so we get it in. So look, here we go. Eddie, but Eddie's still three betting, right? So Eddie's not scared about going coming third. I mean. He's he obviously knows this situation quite well. Looking at his hand and mob, ah, oh, Theodore's not not re yeah, relenting. Yeah, I mean this is this is this is a pure fold from from Eddie really. Bar aces, kings, yeah. queens, you know, but the obvious ones. Uh, even like ace, jack, ace, ace, ten suited, king, queen suited, they're all folds there just because of Alana's stack. Um, but yeah, sorry if you're out here hoping to listen to a lot of rubbish about Liverpool and other football teams, but considering most of us are heartbroken today with the football and only a very small subset 
Acer are happy. I didn't want to talk about it. It's, it's dreadful. But yeah, so Lee, well, let's talk World Series. Was, it genuinely was an exciting afternoon of football to watch uh, with everything that went on. I mean, you know, Villa going two up at City, um, you know, Liverpool only drawing one all at that point. So even though City mm. two nil down, it still wasn't enough. Liverpool needed to get another goal with about thirty minutes to go. And you're thinking, well, they're surely going to score another goal. So how is City going to get this back? Because even so City drawing wasn't enough. So you're thinking, well, this is now. Well, they had a, they had a disallowed goal as well, didn't they? This this is swung to. You're thinking that swung to Liverpool massively, and then all of a sudden City get one back, and they equalise, and then they go ahead in the space of about five or six minutes. Um, and, and that filtered it's through. And the Liverpool fans, it. when the third one went in, I think, which, or when they scored, were then cheering, not realising that City have got you know three in a short space of time. So they so say the emotions must have been pretty, uh, pretty crazy. And that was just what was happening at the at, at the top, down the bottom. Again, there was a point where you thought Burnley are going to do this. They were two nil down. Um, Leeds were had gone one up then. Um, then Brentford equalise, Burnley got one back, and then you're thinking, well, Burnley only need one more goal, and then Brentford went down to, to ten men, then Brentford went down to nine men, because they'd used their three subs and had a player injured as well, so Leeds played against Brentford for the last ten minutes with, you know, against nine men or so, Burnley still just needed a goal, and then, you know, throwing everything at it, and then Leeds go and get a, a winner, which pretty much then that killed it off with a few minutes to go, but yeah, for, from an entertainment point of view, watching the whole, the whole thing, it was, it was, Pretty, uh, pretty insane end to a uh, end to a season. But isn't that what you want? You want it to go right down to the to the wire and stuff to play for. What's the point of it? You know, if the league's all done and dusted weeks in advance. Did you no. see that lady? Did you see that lady that had um had a hundred her first supposedly her first ever bet, but it was a no, hundred pounds. Isn't, it, isn't it always their first ever bet? Yeah, isn't that always? It the always their first ever. You know, because when I when I first went into the bookmakers for the first time ever with all these machines and things, I went. I know. I'm going to bet. I'm going to take a bet that nobody would ever think of, and bet a hundred pounds on it. And anyway, but she had all of ever, Liverpool to win all four trophies, and the bookmaker this morning had offered her a cash out of like twenty five grand. And I, I mean, if they, it, if they, if they that that, that all sounds like a massive pile of bollocks to me. But <laughs> yeah, I would tend to agree. What what do you I know mean, what the odds were? Yeah, one thousand three hundred and. Seventy-one so, to so one. You, so you put that on. Uh, she put that on at the start of the season. Just thought, you know what? I fancy Liverpool for all four. Yeah, for a one -er, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But they offered they offered her the cash out of twenty five grand, and she refused it, which was crazy. And I was just, I was thinking, imagine what the cash out would have been when Man City went two down. Oh yeah. Oh. Been, you know, even say even though Liverpool at that point still didn't have the result, but they just yeah. had Salah on and it was all looking, you know. Um Yeah, and the Villa didn't even have Martinez in goal, did they? They had that blooming absolute buffoon that's useless. Um what's his name? Yes, Olsen. No, I know the one you mean. I know the one you mean. <laughs> Paper so, hands Olsen. I'm Pete Mr. Wigglesworth is in the chat saying we want dry toast videos. That will mean nothing to anybody who hasn't been following the APAT show for about the last two years, to be <laughs> to be perfectly honest. But if you uh, if you have missed out, you wouldn't for anyone that watches our, our or gets to see our intro. Uh, I, sometimes I think it kind of probably flashes up before anybody actually um, manages to log on to the Facebook group. But um, in the intro sequence, there is a there is a reference to the uh, to the dry toaster video. Um, you have to uh, check it out next time. And Simon Lawler says uh, never were those odds. So I think along the lines of what you think Stu um that that story might not be completely uh, uh accurate well they got to have a bit of mar free marketing right get a and, and unsurprisingly she was she was and you know maybe it was a true story but she wasn't an unattractive person um she looked very good on camera really struggled to hold her phone on bet fair mind so that's that's always a surprise um yeah but yeah so, yeah, interesting there was a good bet on now uh, on sky i posted it up in the in the group that um they were offering nine to one on either burnley or leeds to score in the 90th plus minute and that that got them out of out of relegation and if burnley had scored before leeds did that would have paid out because mm. um, i think leeds scored in the in the 90 plus two or something like that or something so um, yeah, might might well. Oh, oh, that's oh, only only at nine to one though. That seems like yeah, really short odds. Yeah. That 
they were offering 16 to 1 on the same bet, but for the top two, so that one of them scored in the 90th plus to basically to win it. I mean, so. Can I just say, I don't like the fact that we keep saying leads when they're actually called dirty leads. <laughs> <laughs> so we've lost Eddie my, right my... in fourth place there, guys, by the way. Um and uh yeah. and um Simon Lawler is in the chat saying any news on the PLO FT. Well they're down to five uh now. Um and Richard Rudling Smith is fifth of five, and we will uh jump to that as soon as this uh this one plays out. Theodore's got a massive chip lead here, so I don't think this will take too long, guys. No, it shouldn't do. It shouldn't do, but we'll see. You never know. These th I've seen these things drag out before. Um, my bet of the season had to be that I bought um, Villarreal in the Champions League uh, in the in the very first round when they drew Inter. I bought them on the exchange, and then when they beat Inter and got drawn against Bayern Munich, I laid them off for quite a big profit. And if I'd have kept hold of them, I think I'd have probably been able to retire. At the odds that we were getting of them winning it um but yeah that was a that was a pretty juicy one that was quite fun but i can't say i do a great deal of betting anymore i'm sure the boys still do i dabble for for just for for, for fun Nothing, uh, I, I like a lucky 31 on the old horses a lucky 31. see my thing is now <clears throat> so um it's it's basically uh you, you pick five horses and you click a button and then you get about you occasionally get your money back okay so basically what, what what that is is you pick five horses and a lucky 31 is you're getting all the combinations so you're getting yeah. them all as individual singles you're getting them all all as the permutations that you could have as doubles all of the trebles all of the four folds and the five folds so if one horse wins you get a little bit back if two yeah. horses wins you get the two singles and the double and, and it extrapolates up okay. I, then, I had one i i won like about six months ago it was the uh the racing like league that it in like the, all, over the flats and, um i basically oh, yeah. first four uh, horses all came in that's good last horse frankie de Tour is riding uh, I, I could have won about i think the, the maximum was like four thousand two hundred and they offered me like um they offered me it was it 750 quid cash out so i let it ride yeah and frankie de Tori promptly came in last <laughs> but i still won like 500 quid off um what 17 pound 50 or something which is what nice. it costs like for an each way very nice deal. well i'm um i go on i've just seen them double up which is interesting alana is now say, that's got pretty fairly, even that's, with that's, theodore as me saying this could be over quite quick and it's it's got balanced out i was just going to answer simon lawler's in the chat saying did dylan win the leaderboard uh well dylan was um was second going into today because um jan um Cuthin from uh, the czech republic has had four caches this week so it was ahead i don't think dylan's played tonight so um, he's had three caches this week, but it's uh, it's certainly not going to make him uh, top of the leaderboard. Um, he's probably going to stay in second place, I would I would guess. Um, Aaron Swazen was third as well at the moment. Richard Rolling Smith could overtake both of them though, because um, he's on that final table of the PLO and he's now second uh, of five uh, remaining players in that, so he could um, still uh, get to the top of the table. Uh, Paul Haycox in the chat. Hi, Paul. Um, obviously coming to check Hi, out whether Dan, Dan should be first reserve uh, for the England team. Um, and uh, says, I mean, I'm a, did, I'm a really good bad boy. Did anyone else just see Scouse on match of the day? Um, <laughs> Twitch, no, because nobody's Twitch, watching that. They're all Twitch, watching us. Uh, yeah, well, exactly. All watching this. Well, uh, I mean, Tomo, oh, Ian yeah. Thompson's in the chat and says, I did. Is that, so he's obviously... You know, multitasking, listening to us whilst watching oh, Match of the Day as well. Terrible, so I'm going to have to behavior. check that out. If Scouse is on Match of the Day, that's uh, he's going to give uh, give our he's probably, probably a, a he's probably, he's he's probably in prison. No, no, basically, someone thought they saw a David Ginola like walking around Anfield, and it just turned out to be Scouse. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So no, I haven't. But um, but yeah, that obviously will be on the iPlayer. You'll be able to check it out. So uh, so Scouts is on match of the day. Excellent. That's going to be well worth watching. Uh, obviously his uh, beloved Liverpool, close but uh, no cigar. I mean, what do you make of it? Um, I mean, as good as the Liverpool team are, um, and have been for the last few years, they've only managed one title. Mm-hmm. Uh, Easier to win cups than it is to win leagues. What four four titles in five years? Yeah, um, it's it's easier to win. Cups than it is to win leagues. 
Yeah, well, they, the they, the they say, they say I mean, they, so. Yeah, you know, I mean, how where do you where do you put this Liverpool team then, really, in the grand scheme of things? Um, Slightly they, behind they the current Man City team. Yeah, if they can't, if they can't, and the title. and a damn sight behind the Man City team next year with Erling Haaland in it, because they're going to just win everything. Yeah, that is looking kind and of. And uh, st- there's there's still they're still behind the Man United treble winning team. I don't care what anybody says. Fight me, I, I like literally <laughs> so so much so much better. Like, yeah, I the trouble is, I, mean, I actually think I I don't think the, the treble winning team was is United's best Premier League team. I think the um, I think the uh, the, the, the Tevez Rooney Ronaldo team I think actually is better than our ninety nine team. Um, it's been my my opinion. I don't disagree. I don't disagree, but I suppose you have to have some. There's so, got to be some trophies to back it up, right? As um, as as you know, completely unbiased Man United fans, where would you think that treble winning United team would? How do you think they'd do against this current Man City team? Oh, they'd get turned over. They get turned over, but is it? Yeah, but again, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like they, you're, they, try, they you're trying over. to compare apples with. Yeah, you're no, comparing no, no. It, apples it, it's with impossible. Pairs. The game, the, the game, game has the, moved on. The game's so, so different. Yeah, 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 but it's so it's different. It's still fun to do though. But uh, but I th- yeah, I, I, but don't, I don't I don't think the I don't think the ninety nine United treble winning team would would you know even get you know close um, to you know to most of the you know the top four five six in the in, in this league. Uh, this that, 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 no, that's, the the team, that's the team that won the Champions League in like the nine hundred and seventy third minute of a, of a injury time, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Um, they yeah, did. You've got to, I mean, they did again. We the... we everyone as a United fan, people forget. You know, you need a bit of luck to to win it. And oh, gotcha! I, and that's where I thought it was. Oh, going for definitely. Liverpool. Yeah. You just thought no. You thought no one would do the quadruple, but you know, Liverpool have had a, a bit of luck. They've had two two domestic league cup um, uh, cup finals, which they've they've taken nil nil to penalties and yeah. won both the penalties. Um, yeah, they could have easily snuck it at the end today. Um, and the, the Champions League, out. they've kept on just like scraping yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's like been in, that in, type in, of in a group. In, in a group that that yeah, it had some big names in it, but teams that aren't realistically that good. Yeah, oh, I would agree. And but they've that, kept that's on the just of, like that's the side of a team that can do that. And they, things, yeah. and they, but that's what you have to do. Like when United won it that in that year, we didn't have, like you said we didn't have the greatest side and. We shimmed through some really good teams, beat Juve, beat um, Inter as well, I think, on the way through. Yeah, well, Bayern Munich in the final was phenomenal. Keen, Keen um, got booked and knew, knew he wasn't going to make the final, but still, you know, just turned around and went, right, I'm going to get you guys yeah, in the yeah. final because he pretty much, you know, bossed that game. But you think our FA Cup run, semi final against Arsenal, penalty save from Schmeichel, Giggs goes and does the ridiculous, oh. you know, ridiculous goal and. Um, and, Lee, and Lee, how, how was your FA Cup run this year? Hair, you know, what's that? Dan, Dan, how did my United's FA Cup run go this year? I Oh, I know how it ended in the highlight of your last 10 years, didn't it? That's right. Well, yeah. not... Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it was up there. To be fair, beating yeah, Spurs mean, was probably better. Do you know, um, so Chelsea lost both um, domestic cups this year. Do you know the last team to do that? Sheffield Wednesday. Very good. It I mean, was, yeah. They lost the FA shot, Cup yeah. and the League Cup. Um, was it both to Arsenal? Yeah, it Arsenal was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can remember that. I know this because my best mate used to live across the road from the house that I'm still in now um, was a Sheffield Wednesday fan. Ah, okay. So like, I basically I remember it because he was like one of my best mates. And yeah. I mean, I've not checked that. I heard it today somewhere. Um, for some reason. Sorry for, for ruining yeah. you. No, no, no! You didn't have far, far from it. To, to... When did when did Borough Borough got to both cup finals? And is that the year you got relegated? Uh, we did. We did League Cup and FA Cup. We lost. Oh, no, no, did we? No. I want to say it's some stat that you got to. Did you win one? Or did you win one of them? No, we 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 West did. We, 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 the, the, only, the only time we've won a cup was the uh, league was the League Cup in two thousand and four against Bolton. At Cardiff, oh, I was that there. Sounds like an exciting game. Yeah, yeah. See though, mate. Like, if you actually supported the, you know, the place, you know, the team from a place where you're from, you'd actually understand mm-hmm. that was a very exciting game for a fan. What do you mean? How do you know where I'm from? Where was I born, Stu? Well, you've got a cracking Man- Mancunian accent. 
So everybody born in Manchester has to have that accent. Well, it usually would be the case. 99% of the time. Mm, you're making assumptions, young man. You're making oh, assumptions. I, I, I always do. It's never going to stop. It's never going to stop. <laughs> um, yeah, well... Oh, crikey, who's, who's, um, oh. whose sound went then? Was that... I think that was Dan's. We lost him completely. We all, it all went nuts and then he uh, turned himself off. Yeah, we might well have lost Dan's, uh, Dan's sound for a minute there. We'll see if we can get it back. Hello. Uh, whilst we're Hello. Down this. So, yeah, these guys are level pretty much now. Um, yep. In fact, if anything, Ellen has actually made yeah, it. Yeah, Ellen's got a lead. Yeah, a little bit of a chip lead. Uh, as we're doing this. Just keeping an eye on everything else. We're down to four in the uh, PLO. And we're down to three now in the uh, in the turbo knockout. Brian Harland is still in there. Pete Wiggins. Go on, Brian. Speaking oh, of good, Brian. solid northerners, no, good, solid northerners. Sorry, solid. Have you lost me, Lee? Oh, you're very, there, very quiet. Well, there he is. We've got you back, but you're very, very quiet. Shall I hold hold my microphone up? Can you hear me now? It it's the same as it was. Yeah. Why have you gone super super quiet? That's very weird. It sounded like someone had set a jet engine off in your bedroom. <laughs> That's worrying. So I'm in the office. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, these these fancy pants people down south, Stu, that have an office yeah. at home. Honestly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you'd never have an office, would you, Lee? I mean, no, no. Lee's office is, is that better? Can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah, that's better. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. That's better, Dan. Yeah. Um, Lee's office is ridiculous. Like, I've been on calls with him before, and like, there's just people working, like his his minions are working in the background <laughs> behind him. He's got like it's all that they're, they're packing up all this dodgy stuff they've been selling on eBay. I imagine they, he's actually got umpa lumpers in his house, just like <laughs> that's where Des is tonight. He's like, doing like I, say, I, I literally was just about to say I've just got images of of Des walking around as an umpa lumper in Lee's like sweatshop. <laughs> there's a, there's a Photoshop opportunity if we ever if we ever. <laughs> <laughs> That is so. Happy. So is <laughs> yeah yeah. Is this is this your is this your office, Lee? Uh, where I am? Yes, like, yeah. Office, office slash studio. Yeah, yeah. Live studio. You've got a live studio. Yeah, there's a lot. There's there's a lot going on here. Do you, the, if only people understood the technology required to put on an APAC show. I know it appears pretty amateurish in what we do, but actually, there's um, <laughs> there's a lot of kit that goes on to doing this, um, to, to say the least. I, I just love the fact that Lee's got another computer in the background that, like, if he needs to, he can just run off and fact. I want to see him in an episode run off to the other computer and just do a bit of fact checking. Yeah. Come back, like, hot off the press. Yeah, but, no, I did. I did used to be on the other desk um, uh, until, but Jen now works from home, and so and she's slowly but surely kind of taken over most of that desk space. Taking so over I'm, your sweatshop. How so dare you? I've moved, moved to another corner of the office instead. So. Been Best shoved in the corner. Be. I've done. I've done the opposite with my job. I've taken this used to. Be, this is Hannah's desk. To be fair, that I set up for her during lockdown, um, but now uh, I've just stolen it. Uh, have we both got like you know multiple screen setups? Or yeah, the well, the problem yeah. I've got is most of my screens are over in the corner. I still need to set. Oh, what you whoa, whoa, whoa. How many screens do we have, Dan? I, I can see right now in total four screens. That I only is have two. Excessive. No, no, no. But you've got to think this is supposed to be an office for two people. So right That's now right, we yeah. have my my own screen that I own. Well, my two screens that I own myself. Yeah. I have my two work screens over there. But Hannah needs these to work. So we were going to sell the house. Well, we sold the house. We we're going to buy a house, but interest rates have gone through the roof. And we, I've looked at fifty houses, and frankly, I'm going to murder the next estate agent I see. So I'm done. So I'm pulling out of selling my house, which means I now need to reorganise this office, which is going to take time, and try and organise a wedding. So all in all, it's just a pain in the bum. You do, um, you doing wedding planning and stuff now? Yeah, wow, see? excellent, brilliant. Yeah, we're getting we're getting married. Uh, well, we know where we're getting married. We're married in Vegas. <laughs> no, it's only late, late. It's, okay. it's okay. I got that. It went worse, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> Oh, did, 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 I, did I miss a funny? You did. Yeah, I actually you did made me giggle funny. a little bit. It was quite good. Funny, yeah. Yeah. So hang on, this looks no, like uh, are we going to get is is and they're going to uh, make the make the call here. Already got seven bigs committed. Theodore's put twenty hey, in the middle. Why not just put the last three point nine big blinds in? There's, they're pretty. You could always, you could always fold. Even 
in stacks here, aren't they? Um, so I wonder what's if, the if, if 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 Valenda goes all in and he folds, I'm literally just going to turn my PC off and go to bed. <laughs> I don't think that's come on, Theodore. Though. Click, 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 fold, fold to Eddie. There's a lot of thinking going on here, and made the Did they There's a shot that. Yes, they both yeah, have the deuce, so they chop there. I'm just going to quickly jump to the um, the, the PLO is going on, but I'm going to jump to the turbo uh, knockout very quickly, just because um, I just want to show you. Um, it's uh, it's Mr. Wigglesworth against Brian Harland. Um, heads up, Pete's got a big Go on, uh, Brian. chip lead, uh, about a sort of four four and a half to one chip lead on uh, on Brian at the moment, and is looks like he's playing super aggro as Pete shoves his entire two point five million stack. In the middle there, but uh, those guys are playing out the uh, the the turbo knockout. So uh, I will keep an eye on that as well. I mean, but, uh, for 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 a man whose nickname is the Stockton Fossil because he plays that tight, um, I'm I'm not sure Brian uh, why Brian's involved in these turbo games, but we we love Brian a bit. He's Known playing him for a years. turbo He's... a turbo PKO. I mean, you, sometimes you just got to live a little. Yeah, bit. it is. Yeah, sometimes I'm going to have to message him. I can't, I can't be having this go nonsense. For it, yeah. Can't be having this nonsense. It'll be, it'll be a misclick, I'm telling you. So, Lee, how many how many monitors have you got on the go? Uh, actually, physically on at the moment. Um, I've got uh, five screens on at the moment. So what? There, well, there's there's so there's um, two laptops running, um, two four um, K screens, and an iPad which controls the studio. So. Jesus wept. I've literally just sat here with my two screens and I'm over the middle. I've got the eight-patch show on one and the studio on one and I've got the, the, the Facebook in the other. On a Sunday night, having played cricket all day. Yeah, that's pretty much what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah. But honestly, mate, you've got no idea. I've, I've got an ice pack on my knee. Oh, wow. Dear. Because stop, we've been through this, Dan. <laughs> just stop it. Yeah, I'm old and I'm fat and, I'm, and I've got bad knees. But you managed to get through um, uh, two cricket games in uh, across the weekend, yeah, which is pretty pretty good. Going. Yeah, two in two days, like yesterday and today, and trust me, it is never happening again. <laughs> never happening again. <laughs> Simon Lawler has just made a very perfect statement at, that's completely a hundred percent accurate. That Brian is heads up against Pete in this uh, turbo knockout, and Brian's not actually won a knockout yet. Well, you can't really <laughs> knock people out when you fold endlessly, we, Brian. We I mean, that's what that, I would say. We actually call that doing a Redfern because I think Steve Redfern did that as well in a in a, might have been one of the um one of the online world champ games we did. That uh, is that is the most sluggish thing I've ever heard. <laughs> like there is there is a there is an affectionate term of being a slug, and I thought I knew what it meant, even though we invented it. But that is the definition personified. Yeah, to get so, heads up in a KO with no bounty. So basically, fifty-six Dream. players have bust that that turbo knockout. Uh, Brian, and Brian has heads up hasn't, and he's not touched bust one a single of one of them. Brian has just, Brian's just waved them all out the door. See you later. Yeah. He, he's like, Brian probably would have said, "I oh, see you later, mate. Thanks. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, Brian. He's the nicest guy in the world." But the fact he just, is, he, he, is now, like, yeah, he is now guaranteed uh, seventy-one dollars, and I mean, he's he's playing for effectively. Um, Oh, it's normally um, it's normally two times what they've got in there, so it's about another sixty bucks um, he's playing for. So um, that that's his what he's playing for now because the first and second prize are pretty much identical in the, in these PKO. So um, he's just playing for. The and everyone everyone wants to see Pete Wigglesworth lose as well. So let's let's go. Let's well, go, Brian. His, his Leeds team have had a have had a result today. So um, yeah, he's a Leeds fan. Everyone wants to see oh. him lose. Oh, guys, it's close. Elena just made the call down there. Theodore's down to eight and a half Beavers. Beavers. In uh, PLO, uh, Richard Riddling Smith finished in fifth, and Tobias um, Swintek uh, finished in fourth. He's from Germany. So that, two that, that, left in that Riddling Smith will never amount to anything, I'm telling you, though. No, probably not. Mm, oh, and a double. Nice to see Elena using a big stack, though, jamming the Jack two suited. Um, Oh, Queens versus King Jack. Oh, that's a pretty good flop. Hold the baby. There oh. it is. And Elena well is... Ah, oh, may the... 
whatever we are. May the 22nd, APAT main event champion. And just as we well said done, that, um, the, 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 the turbo is, uh, is done as well. And, uh, and we lose um, uh, Ace King versus Ace Queen was the, uh, was the final hand on that one. Oh. And, uh, so for God's sake, Brian. So I will quickly jump yeah. to the, um, uh, to the, the PLO and you can, uh, as we're down to three and that as well. So we're, uh, we're nearly there, guys. Or oh, uh, it's been a bit short and sweet one tonight because it's only ten past eleven. Ooh. But we've uh, say one tournament left. It's just the the PLO, um, which could well, looking at this, might have a. I know uh, Thomas has decided to fold. So three players left in this. Uh, Maximilian Scheidner, who I mentioned earlier on um, from Germany, a uh, pretty decent player, regular player with APAT. Um, uh, Alessio Conti from the UK and Thomas Farah from the Czech Republic. Hmm. Lee, is there a reason why your why the studio for this is really blurry on my screen? Um, that is it all just, it, yeah, sometimes it just comes through um, depending on the bandwidth. What goes out to uh, to everybody else is perfect, perfect. But sometimes uh, that's the, why that's why I put it up in the other screen so I can yeah, kind of see sometimes what. Sometimes the feedback that comes back to the guests is not uh, not always the uh, the greatest. Not the, not the one. Never mind. That's fine. I was just double checking. It wasn't. I'd broken something. No, no, you no. Yeah, because that, that would be embarrassing, standing in for dares and then breaking things. No, you know, good. It's, that uh, would... it's not... Uh, no, it's, there's it's, no it's way like, you could be more embarrassing yeah, you know, than dares, yeah, mate. Don't worry about it's, it. It's not, it's not you, it's me. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> you're, 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 you're okay. Not again. Not again. <laughs> I, th I thought I'd never hear those words again, but no. Here they are, biting me, biting me in the ass. But, um, but yeah. So let's have a look at this situation. I think I can just about see this, the chip stacks. So Thomas, is it Thomas Farha? Farah? Thomas? Thomas? Yeah, Farah. Yeah, Thomas Farah. Farah. 800,000 800, in, in chips. I'll, tell you, I'll put it on to... Um, let's put it on to put on the Biebers for us. Yeah, yeah there we go. There we go. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. So this is... Okay. Maximilian holds with the, the top set. Turn in the house. So this is pretty even. Conti's in a, in a tough spot. And being potly at home, this is the worst part about PLO. This is why I hate the game sometimes. Is when you're when you've got like fifteen big blinds, and you have a hand, you can't really do a lot, can you? <laughs> you just like you pot it, and everybody just cools, and you hate your life. It's uh, it's one of the nuances. But you can actually play. Uh, we always see with the Omaha um, that yeah, you can you can really drag it out and get down to sort of, you know, five bigs, six bigs in, in Omaha. And it's not, it really isn't an issue. Oh yeah. The equities run so close as well that you can, you can always spin a stack up very quickly. Um, I did that yesterday, but the other way around, I got to the final table with the chip lead. I think with five left, four paid, I came fifth. Dream. It's the way to do it. I think Stu's microphone has been muted, which is, it's a bit like Christmas. I thought we were just in May, but you there, Stu? Oh, we can't. Oh, God, this is this is this is the best part of my day. This is amazing. Has he really managed to mute Stu, his you're... microphone? No, he's, he's just going to go out and come back in see if he can uh, if he can sort of sort itself out. Bless him. But yeah, I think I hopefully I should get to should get to Dust till Dawn for at least a weekend of of WCAOP. I'm hoping. So if there's any losers out there that need a tag team partner, I might and I walk in the building, feel free. You can play. I'll just donate the donate the money and come around and say hey to everybody. Unless you're really bad at poker, then I might play, but that's you know, that's another thing. There Are you go. gonna be there, Lee? Oh yeah, is we'll that be Stu? There. Yeah, I will be there. Um I think we might have Stu back. You back, Stu? Yes, 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 yeah. Yeah. Temper until microphone. Excellent. A bit of a slap and then second whilst I um will you back into the um lee have you been doing some diy behind you diy what's that your blue handrail looks like it's got dust on it oh no it isn't got dust. it's um it's um uh, the dogs tend to jump up on there to look out the out the back window so uh, so ah, okay. oh it's a yeah it's a window so it needs repainting it's a window so <laughs> yeah so <clears throat> yeah, they, um... What sort of timber operation is this, Lee? 
yeah, was, having that in the background. As quick as you do that, they um they they're up and uh, looking out the back out the back window. So uh, when they're upstairs, yeah, well, I'm I am. Um, uh, I painted I'm my door. Rattle through and see if I can work out where we're going to be leaderboard ladders wise for the for the week as we're down to three, and I don't think these three are necessarily going to uh going to impact on the uh the top of the table. Um, that's for that's for sure. So I'm not not seeing any names there that are going to cause uh, much concern. It's a very interesting dynamic three-handed. You've got somebody, you've got the chip leader that's got double second, who's got double third, so it could be very swingy. But uh, Alessio Conti doesn't sound the most English of names, I'll be honest, but um, is the short stack and is going to need to start doing something pretty quickly. Oh, just lots of folding going on. Yeah, you got to start pressing that pot button, haven't you, really? I mean, it's like, just find a hand that's got some kind of connecty suity stuff about it and just go, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, I, I think when you're this short, you can even look at reverse reverse blockers to sound all wanky and yeah. jazzy. But, you know, just just even if it's deuce, deuce three, six, seven, or it's something, I mean, that's, that is terrible, but... Anything, anything that's in the middle of the range as opposed to the top end, because you well, don't. You're not, well, you're not getting dominated by other people's. Absolutely, there you go. Look at that. Aces, there you go, you see? Aces get cracked by the old ten, eight, nine, four. Yeah. So, so what you're saying there is basically hands where you're not going to be dominated by the other person's calling kind of range. Yeah, exactly. Their calling range should be top middle, right? So they're calling. Yeah, so range you, you're, you're, you're looking of... to have live cards, basically, to get in with just just with live cards and see if you can get there. Yeah, absolutely. Especially. Especially when you're so short, like, and the stacks, like the effective stacks in this tournament right now are very short as well. You can really push those equities, like having 40% to win a pot of, 50, say, 12 big blinds when the total amount of big blinds in the tournament is only 50 was actually quite a good spot to be in. So you can really start pushing those yeah. equities a bit closer. Um, but I think, and that's the problem. Like I've played a lot of the APAP PLO stuff and especially the PLO 8. How many people I see playing like Jack Jack Ten Nine in PLO Eight is like they're playing for half a pot. They're playing for half a pot there, aren't they? I mean, it's like yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy what you see, but they do it, and it's the same as you know. Sometimes hands like Ace King Queen Five with the one spanner at the end, and and just say one suit, three handed yeah. suddenly becomes much stronger than you know yeah. Ace Queen Ace Queen. 10 9 double suited because because of the blockers so it, it's really weird where the where the ranges start to merge into into one another and this kind of middle range that is normally particular not particular, it's, it's weak you know it's, yeah, it's, it's no good yeah, yeah. For, well it's no good to bluff with you can bluff with the bottom end of your range and you can value with the top end it so it kind of sits in the middle whereas at this stage of the tournament actually that's what there's a lot of good equity to be used um but people don't seem to do it. They just seem to kind of sit and be very passive, and mm. it's difficult. So but, Brian um, Harland is in, yeah. the, uh, is in the chat, says, uh, no bounties, that's the way to do it. He said he did get £60 in the Sky uh, on Sky in bounties, though, so that's OK. Uh, Simon Lawler asks, Dan, are there many of the Team Gotham coming to the WCOAP? Couldn't tell you. Haven't spoken to any of them in a very long time. I had children, and basically what happens when you have children is you lose your social life. Um, so I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, I also don't have Facebook, so I have no real means of contacting. I'm sure someone will be over. I'd imagine Dave will be over for Dubai for a little yeah, bit. Well, I mean, um, although I'm, he might be I'm invaded. In the, I'm in their chat, so I do know that they've, uh, they're all pretty excited about it and making plans. So, uh, Lee yeah, lurking, just, just, just them, watching. A number of them will be, uh, uh, will be playing at some point, uh, during the week. So, yeah. I think I think David is actually, uh, Dave is actually heading over. Yeah, I think you are correct. Uh, I've got to see David. Normally London, the thing, actually. but yeah, so, so, yeah. So yeah I haven't I haven't today. seen or spoken to any of them in a in a very long time. Children took me away from the real world, and they still do now. Sodding things, but um. So yeah, I don't know. So hopefully they'll be there. Hopefully it'll be be nice to catch up. So yeah, it'd be cool. But yeah, it's been a while. It's been many a year. Who won the group? Are you, are you group? still I in the group, Lee? I, I didn't see. Yeah, yeah, I'm still in the group. Yeah, yeah I just it, it's on mute, but I am <laughs> still in the group. Very much, very much so. Uh, 
I, I love the fact it's still going. That's impressive. Um, yeah, who won the Grand Prix today? Did anyone see that? Um, who was that today? Was that Barcelona? Yeah. Verstappen. Okay. F1 is not for me. No, I just Googled it. Verstappen, I admit, Sergio I, I, Perez. I don't normally watch it. I mean, I watched the, what happened last season and, and actually it kind of put me off a little bit in a like, well, this is just a bit of a farce, isn't it? But uh, maybe it'll sort itself I mean, out. F1 is, is generally just who's got the slightly better computer than the rest of the field. I mean... Well, I must admit, I am. Is, is, quite hang on, isn't that forward. poker nowadays as well? I, I am quite looking forward to uh, next year when there's going to be a Formula One race in Vegas. That I think uh, that'll be pretty, interesting. I'm racing around the strip cool. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that that does look pretty cool. Uh, I must admit. Um, whether it's to, to uh, be fair, how poker's expensive now all about to get out to Vegas for that um, that weekend, I would imagine um, prices will be through the roof. But, uh, could, could I just say that I don't think we've given Liverpool fans nearly enough grief for not winning the league this day tonight. It's been absolutely terrible. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, we've actually yeah, been very, you know, they've got off quite lightly, really. I, I don't want to be responsible for grown men crying, I'll be honest. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll do, do it, I don't care. I'll take that for the team. Stu, do you honestly think very many Liverpool fans going to the game today City at home genuinely thought they had a chance of winning it. Of course they did, because they're all delusional idiots. <laughs> and they're all, oh, God, yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what it would have been like if they'd won the league as well? The, oh, the, it'd, be, the un, it'd be unbearable. Won. There'd the be cockneys. The there'd there'd become, be people. We'd have all oh. become Real Madrid fans um, for 100%. Uh, mate, I already am. Yeah. Falls so and misery. So on that, uh, Champions League final next um, on, on Saturday night. Um, Real Madrid seem to have found some knack to get to the final this year when you know, they, they don't, it doesn't look yeah. like yeah. their team is anything like they've had in the past. But then they've also romped the Liga, haven't they? So, um, so they must in be doing In Benzema right. we trust, that's all I'm going to say. Come on, come on, Karim. Yeah, well, they must be doing, they must be doing something right. Who do you fancy for the, for the Champions League? Final. Do you think uh, Real Madrid will find a way? No, Liverpool. You think Liverpool will? Just to annoy me, because they 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 say they're, they're, like Liverpool fans are the most unbearable people in the world when they win things. It's like they're, 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 it's like oh I don't know they're just like oh, they're, I've never heard people bleat on about things as much as Liverpool fans do, and. I hope to God that Real Madrid win it because I can't be bothered listening to people who are from London and God knows where else talking about how much you know they care about football and stuff. And it's just so no. Simon Lawler's in the chat and says, "Yeah, saving the abuse for when they lose the European Cup next week." Yeah, <laughs> so. So, Simon knows. Yeah. So, Simon likes a lot of my uh, my Facebook posts, like <laughs> basically about Liverpool and their fans. So. So yeah, but, it's, but but the thing is though, Stu, it's different for them because they're from Liverpool, so it's you know it's different rules. You, you to be you fair, know, if they are understand. from Liverpool, it is. Yeah. If you lived in Liverpool, it would be your highlight, right? Any anything yeah. good happening, like. Yeah, no, I, I mean, agree completely. Most oh. of them pat themselves on their back if they didn't rob a car that week. So, like, there's <laughs> you know, oh, you've got to, you've got to, got to give them some credit, and I'm going to take. One of, my favorite, um, one of my favourite football songs I've ever sung was at Anfield, singing, We've got Juninho, you stole our stereo. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was fantastic. <laughs> it's so true, though. It's so true. Yeah. But um, I'm going to go for over two and a half goals and both teams to score. That's my selection. Okay. Because I don't not, really not, want to not follow anybody winning. Not calling it one way or the other, but um, I mean, the semi-finals were incredible to watch. So um, I hope the final is not a well. You know, the way Liverpool have been going in cup finals this year, it'll be nil-nil and go to penalties. But um, let's hope it uh, it doesn't, because that would be a real shame. To, let's uh, hope Karim Benzema scores six goals and Madrid win six-nil, and we can all laugh. <laughs> As the quadruple <laughs> becomes a double, and they can all shut up. So uh, Very Thomas, Thomas I love Farris the passion. got a, a massive chip lead here now on Maximilian, who uh, gets his chips in the middle. And uh, there we so go, Kings go versus. Oh, and that's that's the flop. Okay, for a massive oh, pack of turns. no. Oh, there it is. 
There it is. There, Whoop, it there it is. So flop Broadway, but then uh, turn made a boat for uh, for Maximilian, and uh, and on they go again. So as far as leaderboard ladders goes for the week, as I say, I don't think either of these are going to um going to make much of a, uh, a dent at the top of the leaderboard. So let me run through who's picking up some uh, some added value tickets this week. Um, Jan um, Cuthan from the, the Czech Republic had four caches, didn't get caught, nobody caught up. It's quite a low score, actually, for top of the leaderboard. 215 points, but four caches, pretty good uh, to, to them. So they're on step two, so they're going to pick up two lots of, uh, uh, three lots of $11 tickets, should I say. Uh, making up the rest of the top five, um, uh, Elena, who um, who we saw earlier on, uh, has had two caches this week, so finishes second. Pascal Levinson from Austria has had three caches. Richard Rodling smith has had three caches. And Pete Wigglesworth, uh, two caches this week, and that's enough to pick up double tickets for all of them. Uh, Richard Rodling smith is on the step four, so he's going to pick up uh, $33 tickets. And Pete Wigglesworth is step three, so he's going to pick up $22 tickets. Uh, also in the top 20, Aaron Swazlan uh, is step four, so he's going to pick up... Uh, a $33 ticket as well. Apart from that, though, the rest of them are all step ones. So uh, an another reasonably cheap week, cheap week for us, uh, which is uh, is always nice to see. So. Obviously, because Dan's bought, our Dan Dan is paying for all these tickets out of his own pocket. Yeah, yeah, that's how it works. Absolutely. Whoever hosts the show uh, basically hundred percent the added value ticket. So did did good. you not hear the intro? I now own I own Desi's share of APAT, so that's it. I've I've got loads of changes I'm going to make. You don't want to hear them. I'll upset everybody. And uh, and Stu, you uh, you need to like talk it. to Dan about your appearance fee as well. Yeah, that's uh, that's not. Yeah, yeah. Did oh no, well, Dan, did you not talk to my my uh, my agent before this? Your agent, yeah. Your agent said you were so bad that you were paying me. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you could you could try that, but unfortunately, the two hundred and fifty pound a week retainer still needs to be paid. That's fine. I'll, I'll make sure that's covered. Don't worry. Because what Cheers, I'm going to do is, as, as the new leader of APAT, is anybody that complains about structure, I'm now going to double the reg fee for them. So yeah, yeah, yeah I like fine. that. I like that. I'll have I'll have it back in one event. It's fine. I do. Uh, just basically put put a tax on people complaining about shot clocks, and then just put a post on the uh, on the uh, <laughs> Facebook group about shot clocks, and but you'll make you'll make millions. Stu, 10 seconds is not enough. I need more. Who's got a shot clock? Am I missing something? Where have, have we got shot clocks in APAT now? Uh, oh, yeah. Dust till dawn uh, run, run shot clocks. Yeah, so uh, that's It was standard, glorious. Standard it was absolutely there. fantastic. It's, it's amazing. It makes such a good difference. Uh, to, to I, the, I used to, by mistake, when I was drunk and I thought they were chips. And that was, that was <laughs> the only time I used them. I love that. No, that's good. Like, who can complain about that? Poker gets so slow sometimes. You know if you're calling and you know if you're folding and if you don't know. No, but sorry. people but people like to sit there for a bit and have their little second where they can look at people. Oh dear. Oh, I'm, I agree. I agree that. completely with that, Dan. Oh dear. I, I'm <laughs> I'm happy. I'm ha no slugging about. We like it. So um Simon it's Lawler's fine. in the chat and says, any prize for finishing around 40th? I mean, Simon, you do yourself a huge disservice. You finished thirty fifth, um, so you, know, so... <laughs> you should have known that, Simon. Come on, I thought you knew everything. Yeah, but uh, but one one half decent cash this week. To be honest, a second cash, Simon, and I think you'd have got into the top twenty. You were only about fifteen points off. You scored forty odd points, so you're only fifteen points off getting into the top twenty. So. Uh, yeah, very very close. Um, what do you think? Does does Simon deserve a, a ticket for finishing thirty fifth, guys? Absolutely I... yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I, the I the, would the amount of value Simon has brought to this show by correcting all your mistakes and Desi's mistakes and no giving offense, you all the I... information you need, Simon deserves multiple tickets. Never mind one. Anybody case, that will, looks uh, like sort, possibly sort Simon out a, a, a ticket, and obviously give, um, give Snoopy crossed. a ticket. Yeah, fingers crossed for next weekend because obviously it's Forest versus Huddersfield in the. Uh, well, do they still class it as the richest game, football game around? Yeah. The playoff the playoff into the into the Premier League. I mean, yeah? I, I personally hope that they win because in at that point in time, Middlesbrough are going to get about thirty million pounds for one of the most average right wing backs I've seen in my entire life, in Jed Spence, who is on loan at Forest from us. Oh, is he really? Oh, right. Okay, I didn't yeah. realize that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Forrest just won't be able to afford it. They will. 
if they got if they got up, they they uh, buy him, or is is that part of the deal that they would have to? Well, buy? no, but like Arsenal and Spurs and God knows who would be like like oh, really? those Italian teams have been like um, linked with him. Oh wow! So we're basically just sat there licking our lips at the thought of a an auction for a player who is worse than our right wing back. Fair enough. It's great. Nice. Oh, we've got so we've I, got I, a right wing back spot at United. See, I'd love to see Forrest back in the Premier League. Um, really, really would. Um, growing up, you know, and, and early years of the Premier League when they were they were there, and you know, and sort of when you were doing your Brian Roy and Pierre yeah, Van Hooydonk. Kind of I just yeah, it'd be Mark nice Crosley. It'd be lovely to see Forrest back up in the uh, in, in the top flight. Doo-doo. Well, I'm not, but I so wouldn't. You're not I him. Um, no, I don't see Simon. I couldn't call, I couldn't call Jed Spence. Week, I think it's really tough. Yeah. So he sounds as in chat. Do you not rate him? But I've seen Jed Spence play for us for like two years, and he was bang average, and his attitude was terrible. And he's all about himself. Right. I, I don't see. We got a lad called Isaiah Jones at right back, who I think is far better than him. But he's had. A, he can't, I can't see, say he's not had a good season though. He's uh, he got into the. Did he not get into the championship team of the year? I think he did. The only Forest player did, that yeah. did. No, no. But I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to look at the stats, and I'm pretty sure that the guy we've got at right wing back now is better than him. He's got more assists and stuff. He's like, and like I say, his attitude's far better. Jed Spence is all about Jed Spence, basically. And yeah, he's gone down there. He's done well, which I'm happy for him for. And I'm, I'm more happy the fact that we can now sell him for 15, 20 million pound, and use that to invest in our squad. Do you want to swap him for Wan Bissaka? No, we've already got a right back that's better than Wan mate. Most most I teams mean, have, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. I I just feel sorry for Wan Bissaka. He was like on this precipice of, of being like a world class right back, and then Man United ruined him. So the trouble is though, Danny, he never would be. He he is a brilliant defensive fullback, one on one and tackling at superb. The minute he looks forward with the ball, he hasn't got a clue what to do. That's the I, thing. I, with, right, with right backs nowadays, you've got to yeah. be offensive, aren't you? And, and you've got oh, I know, I know. Yeah, we he's, we, he's we spoke compared, about this before. Yeah, he's being compared with, you know, with with James at, at Chelsea and Alexander Arnold at Liverpool, and yeah, and yeah, and he, he just isn't. He's not. He's never going to be that that player. He's a very solid. I say a one on one. I don't think there's probably anybody better in the Premier League one on one. Maybe maybe War, maybe Carl Walker, one on one from a defense. But but yeah, nothing much gets past him. But his positioning is shocking, and he hasn't got a clue moving forward. Ultimately, he's not you know, he's not what you need. Well, I'm I'm am- I'm still amazed they didn't try him in a back three. I really am. I yeah, feel well, like I, that I'd would be it. such Des a better fit for him. Said that, but I said I I, I thought it was a solution. Yeah, I really did. Put him on the right of a back three, give Maguire a little bit of confidence because Maguire is shaky as the pooping dog. There we go. Um, Maximilian oh. does a win. Maximilian oh, wow. does a win. And, uh, and Maximilian uh, is a winner. And that was uh, that. Was that. Um, so, yeah, Maximilian picks up the uh, nice win there, actually. $375 um, up top for the PM nice. tonight. Um, and 230 for second. So, Thomas Farah finishes in second. And uh, Alessio Conti uh, from the UK finishes in third so that doesn't change anything on the leaderboard guys as i uh, as i mentioned um so uh um it is simon lawler that finishes 35th um and well, the other places don't really matter do they really because uh, he's going to pick up a ticket no that's it guys, simon you wins you guys you guys said he should so no but uh yan yan Kuthin from um from the uh the czech republic uh four caches this week so top of the table so very well done to you and we do it all again um, tomorrow night, uh, leaderboard ladders week sixty-two starts tomorrow night. Um, so uh, get involved if you can and, uh, and see how see how you get on for the week. No rest for the wicked, Lee. No rest for the wicked. It doesn't stop. So, um, are we there, Dan? Are we pretty much um uh, are done for your first um show hosting? How did uh, how did it go? The ninety minutes or so seemed to fly by. I mean, it's always always a pleasure to see Stu's shiny head. I, I feel Leave privileged. Leave me alone, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I said I get you. I just didn't say when, right? No, it's been good fun, right? Okay. It's always nice to it's nice to be a guest. It's nice to not have Des here. Um, very you know, true. Very true. My, less less Liverpool talk, which is which is always positive. Mm-hmm. We got to talk a bit of poker as well, which was which was novel. 
strange um, but, but yeah good time so thanks for having us guys um i want to say a big thank you for Stu because without Stu being here you'd probably be laughing at me instead and that's not kind so thank you Stu, for your appearance anytime mate anytime for being the california and Stu, genuinely hopefully i'll see you at, uh, if you have a good well you'll have a good time at vegas i'm sure but hopefully yeah. i'll see you at dust dawn yeah and we can have a, have a have a have a beer mate it's been it's been a long it's been time a, long, a very long time let's do it let's do it so yeah Always um, beer. everybody else i'm not buying you a beer um i can't afford to <laughs> i've got kids um so yeah it's fine but yeah no thanks for having me on guys and sounds more like des by the second Doesn't don't worry Doesn't des will be back next week well yeah well, huge thank Des you to you, Dan. Next week. Really, really uh, do appreciate um, you stepping in and, and and helping us out this week. And uh, and as, as Dan says, um, hopefully Mr. Duffy will be back next week and we'll be doing it all again uh, next Sunday. Whatever you're playing uh, online or live um, during the week, good luck at the tables. Uh, enjoy whatever it is you play. And uh, we will catch you all uh, 10 o'clock next Sunday. Keep safe, everybody.